hi guys very good morning everyone welcome back to my channel again my name is Sai Kiran so today we are going to discuss about an ad gateway and we are also going to discuss about what is elastic IP and what exactly does elastic IP does why the name is elastic okay so today our topic is NAT gateway guys okay Imagine guys, before jumping on to the practical so NAT gateway, let me tell you a small example. Imagine you do have a house and this house does have a separate post box okay, with some XYZ name. Whenever your relatives or whenever your best friends are sending some gifts or letter cards, all these were uh, coming into the same post box address from your friends or from your family. Uh, this Imagine this address has Vizag 3 to 1 some road or something imagine after a few years we have shifted to a different place where you bought a new house and now the house address has been changed this post box address will also be changed so this is where the elastic IP comes into the picture guys elastic IP what it will do is even if you are changing it to a different place you can uh, request them for a permanent post box address where you can bring the same address here three to one road no matter wherever you are this I this address should be constant itself only okay I'll I'm going to show you this practically also do not worry so before uh, going to the practicals Make sure the reason why we use this elastic IP is the reason why we use mainly this elastic IP is imagine you are having a web server okay yesterday I've shown you one web server right ICICI bank if that instance got stopped for some reasons basically it will it won't stop I'm just telling you example if there is no elastic IP the default IP will be there now the default IP will be changed guys so sometimes if you in future we will be using route 53 okay under some records we will be giving this web instance IP if it gets changed what will happen the route will not direct right then the user cannot search your website this is one case and tomorrow we are going to do one video which is TZW which is transit gateway where we are going to put one server in AWS and we are going to put one virtual machine in Azure this can be also used in on-prem servers also okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that there is a proper communication going on between this uh, Azure virtual machine and AWS instance with the help of transit gateway or we do have another thing called VPG which is virtual private gateway okay for such instances we need a constant IP so let's achieve this guys let's forget about this uh, transit gateway and uh, virtual private gateway but understand the gist of this elastic IP the main advantage of using this elastic IP is if you don't want uh, that elastic IP to current instance you can release that IP address you can release that elastic instance and you can add it to the different instance also it's your wish completely now let me take you to the practicals quickly see before coming to this session I have launched one instance just to show you if I refresh this is the testing instance guys remember this IP okay which is 52 23 231 74 I'll put it in the notepad also I'm stopping this instance or I'll yeah I'll stop this instance see guys we have stopped and started the instance now let me refresh we'll see if the IP address remains same or if it is constant let me refresh uh, we got the testing instance up running if I click here not portfolio it's on testing See guys, before what was the IP? 74 right, now it got changed to 141.50 Now to avoid such instances, what you can do is go to the elastic IP and make sure I will release this 
I'm not going to create. Yeah, now I'll create one allocate and then select the region and then allocate. Okay, once after uh, it's been uh, up, then what you can do is you can select this, click on actions and make sure you're allocating your IP address to an instance. Here, make sure you're selecting your instance properly, guys, because see, mine is testing, right? I'll click testing and then I'll click on allocate. What was the IP here? 143.189.52.204. Now I'll refresh. See, it got changed. Previously, what was the IP here? 141.50. Now 143.189. Now what I'll do is I'll stop this in instance one more time. Now see, this IP will not be changed. It will remain constant. I stopped it. I'll refresh again. I'll see whether if it is up or not. Ha, huh, it's up guys. Now, let me refresh one more time. Now, if you click on testing, see, our IP is same. It's not changed. What was our IP before? 143.189, right? This is the IP we have assigned. 143.189. So, the reason why it is called elastic IP is, no matter what, you can remove from here, guys. You can remove from this instance and I can attach it to my portfolio also. So that is the reason why it is called as elastic IP. Now what I'm going to do is make sure you are releasing this IP address. Okay. Now we are running out of this IP addresses. And if you are leaving it like that, then you will cost more. I'm sorry. I clicked the wrong thing. Yeah. Dissociate. Elastic IP address and then select it. And then release. Okay. Nice. Now before jumping on to the NAT gateway, let's jump on to our. So this is the this is our uh, task guys for today. Now what we shall do is let me open my pencil calligraphy to and then OK. So see here I have taken one VPC. This is the VPC. OK. And I have taken the cider ranges 10.0.0. .0. This is one. And here I have taken two public subnets. Okay. Two public subnets. Imagine this is a web server and this is an app server. And I have taken, I'm sorry guys, here I forgot to write the IP address. I mean subnet range. 0.12 has been used. 3.0 slash 24. 10.0.4.0 slash 24. Okay. Now what you have to do? we have created one vpc and two public subnets two private subnets this public subnets do have internet access so that it will directly go out and communicate with the internet okay but when it comes to the private subnet we don't give any direct access instead what we'll do is we'll create one nat gateway and we'll make sure we are attaching a public subnet to it guys make sure when you're creating a nat gateway you should attach a public subnet not a private subnet because whenever you wanted to search something uh, outside of your VPC, how it will go to the internet is it will go like this. It will connect to the public subnet. Your pub, your private this this elastic IP will not go outside, guys. Your public IP will go outside of the internet. I mean, from the internet gateway, and then it will access the internet. Okay. So now let's achieve this by doing the task. Launch instance. I'm sorry, not launch instance. First, you need to create a VPC. Create VPC, VPC and more. I'll give us delete later. Side range is okay for me. And then number of availability zones, one is enough. Number of public subnets, one. Oh, for high availability, I'll take, I'll take two availability zones. Number of public subnets, two. One is web server, one is app server. Number of private subnets, two. And then NAT gateway, one in the availability zone is enough. And then endpoints, no. And then create VPC. VPC endpoints, not required it has none and then create vpc let's wait till it gets completed guys let's wait for some more time guys till the nat gateway is creating 
only the NAND gateway will be do taking much time guys in future what we're gonna do is we're not going to do anything manually we are going to use cloud formation templates and uh, in next see once after completing this AWS we are going to use uh, the most DevOps tools for automating all these things the reason why I am telling you the cloud is see if you're not doing manually then when you're doing automation you will not understand for what purpose you're doing automation and why you are doing automation and you will not know the steps how to do the automation because manually you doesn't know uh, what's going on in the backend exactly okay it's done click on VPC <coughs> let's see guys let's see our uh, graph here is our VPC we do have uh, this is the public subnet right and routing table is connected to the internet gateway awesome and another public subnet this routing table is connected to the internet gateway awesome one private subnet it should connect to the NAT gateway nice and this NAT gateway is connected to a public subnet another private two okay route tables nice okay it's connected to the NAT gateway nice now once after doing this what you have to do is you have to go back to the security groups for now what you can do is you can allow all but make sure that in real time you are not supposed to do it yesterday we have uh, discussed about the security group right so follow that pattern but do not allow all during the time of your production or in real time but now I am allowing all sorry Make sure that there are no spaces. Enter. This is our security group. For now, I'll make sure hello all. All traffic. Anywhere IP address. Save rules. Nice. Let's create one instance. Uh, make sure this is public instance. Ubuntu. 20 and then t2 micro is fine see something has been selected here I need Ubuntu 20 t2 micro is fine make sure I'm selecting the proper PEM file network VPC not KTS, I'm sorry. We do have our own right. Delete later. This is the one. This is the public subnet. Refresh it. Okay, public subnet 2. I'll select. No problem. I need auto SN IP address, security groups, and then default. And then launch instance. Now you have to create one more instance for private. Okay. Launch instance. Mark it as private. Select Ubuntu. You can select whatever you want. 20. T2 micro. Key pair is latest not pen. And here make sure that you are selecting properly, guys. Mine is private subnet. I don't want auto SN public IP, security groups, and then launch instance. Let's wait these instances to come up. I guess public should come up. Yeah, it's up already. Let me connect to this. Let me copy this. Go here and then it's logged in already. Ping Google.com Nice, it's pinging All good Let's log into our uh, private server Before logging into the private server What you have to do is You have to copy the private IP address Correct? There will be no public Because we have not given any public access Copy it Guys Before 
logging into the private server i need to copy my pem file here let me stop the screen share now here is it guys i copied my pem file now what i'll do is i'll give permissions only to me chmod 400 and then key dot pem okay permissions were there now what i'll do is ssh hyphen i key dot pem username username is ubuntu at the rate where is the private IP? This is my private server private IP. Let me paste this, click enter and then give yes. See, it's logged in. 139.23, right? Our private IP. It's logged in. Now let's check whether if we are able to access sudo su I'm sorry, sudo su hyphen w get ping www dot google.com find great we have achieved one now let me check this copy link address w get that's it we got it guys it's downloaded we do have a public public access for our uh, private server also but it is not directly guys we have created a NAT gateway here that's all for today guys thank you so much everyone um, i hope you like the video make sure you are like like and uh, subscribing this uh, uh, channel and if whomsoever is interested your friends and all please forward this video to them guys let's grow together and if you have any doubt please please put it in the comment section if you are not putting it in the comment section i don't understand whether if i am teaching it good or bad i do have confidence that i am going good but still i personally need your feedback that's all from my end today. You can also send requests to me on LinkedIn. Have a nice day guys. We'll see you in the tomorrow's session. Bye-bye.